All right, guys, so welcome to your 14th tutorial, and let's go ahead and start crunching some numbers. So like I said, what this is going to do is basically tell us how likely a stock is to go up or down based on history. So the first company we're going to be looping through is Yahoo. Now say we were looking at the last month of Yahoo's data, and we see that Yahoo went down, um, let's say there were like 10 days where Yahoo dropped in price. Well, that's a critical piece of information, but what we are worried about is the following day, what is it likely to do? So we'll say of those 10 days where it went down in price, maybe the following day it went up eight times and down twice. So based on history, the next time Yahoo drops in price, it may be a good idea to buy it since it's 80% likely to go up, 20% likely to go down based on historical data. So you know the saying is that the best indicator of the future is history or something like that. You know, it, it's a little more clever sounding than that, but you know, I, I don't know it exactly. So let me go ahead and stick to what I'm good at, not sayings, but actually programming, and we'll make some variables. We'll count the number of days that the stock goes up, down, and we'll also keep track of how many days it doesn't change at all. So next day increase, and we'll go ahead and set this to zero by default and let me just go ahead and copy this bad boy next day decrease so basically we're gonna loop through all the data and every time it goes up a day we'll add one to this every time it goes down a day we'll add one to next day decrease so of course they're at zero by default and in some rare cases it doesn't happen often but next day no change it doesn't change at all so equals zero so now what we want to do is we actually want to not only keep track of these numbers, but we want a total of all the days. So, And the reason we want this is because whenever we're trying to figure out averages later on, let's say over the month a stock went up 10 days. Well, that's nice, but is that, you know, 60% or 40%? We don't know, so that's why we need a total to figure out the averages. And another thing that I want to do is I'm going to be keeping a sum of all the increases and decreases. And this is just going to be used for averages later on too. So sum of increases and we'll set it equal to zero. And we also want a sum of the freaking decreases. So sum of decreases. It sounds like a weird word. Like you're trying to get creases out of, creases out of something. If I when I'm old, I hope someone decreases my face. Get it? Yeah, that's a little joke. But anyways, let me go ahead and the next thing we want to do is we want to run a query. Now what this query is going to be responsible for is we want to say, okay, select all of the days where the price of the stock has dropped. Well, how do we do that? Let me just go ahead and store it in a string called SQL. Seems to be the... Uh, you know, popular one around here nowadays. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, put these little things. And I want to select, see, the only thing we really need is we want to select the date and the percent change. We can also do amount change. <coughs> Sorry, my freaking cough coming back up. Because, check this out, we don't need open and close and we don't need to figure out all that because whenever percent change is a less than zero then we know that it went down we only we're not determining how much it goes down we're only looking for the days it went down so it doesn't matter the amount change as long as it's less than zero then that means that that day it went down so I'll show you guys what I'm talking about so we want to select the date and the percent change from and in order to select it from a company, just do this. For the company ticker, remember we've got this in the last tutorial, we want to plop it right in there and it's going to select it from a table because whenever we built these, the table names were the exact same names as the company ticker. So that is why we can just say select date percent change from company ticker and basically all of these not are only are only um what do I want to say names of companies but they're also table names so that's why I did that and so how can we phrase this where percent change is gray or excuse me is less than 
zero, I was about to press O on my keyboard, and we want to order by date ASC, ascending. And I already have one of those. So basically we're saying, okay, select the date and percent change from Yahoo where the price or excuse me the percent change is less than zero in other words in everyday terms select all the days where the stock price went down order by day ascending so now with that query what we need to do is actually run it so let me just go ahead and do that right now I'll move this so you guys can see a little bit easier and I'm gonna store it in a variable called result now in order to do this of course you need my SQL underscore query because this is the function that actually runs the query what query do you want to run how about this one right here so now with that being said what result is going to do is it's going to give you true if this query ran successfully and it's going to give you false if it ran and unsuccessfully now I want to say this before I move on because a lot of people seem to have problems with this this isn't going to be false if it returns a result of zero. It's only going to be false if your query is messed up somehow. So a result set of zero is a valid result set. So it would still be true in that case. So don't get a result set of zero, which means you have no, you know, maybe this didn't go down any days. So my result set would be zero. This wouldn't be false in that case. It would just be an empty result set. So remember, a lot of people get that confused. I just want to mention that. So what we're going to be doing now is test if this result, in other words, this query ran properly. And if it did, then we have successfully found all of the days from a certain company where the price dropped. So now, like I said, what we want to be focused on is getting the next day's worth of data. So I'm going to be showing you guys, whenever you have a result set, how to get the next row. And it's actually more complicated than you guys think. So stay tuned for that. And uh, again, I want to mention that I'm going to be taking all this code and posting it on my forum. So if you guys, you know, don't want to hear me babble on, you just want to jump to the code, then go ahead. It's all for free. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys then.